Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for Easter Sunday, April the 24th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. And yesterday I meant to show some pictures, so let's get right to some pictures I wanted to show yesterday. But this is from uh, St. Louis, and they've done a storm survey up there and uh, completed that and uh, there's a shot of some of the damage in the residential area and then here's a shot taken uh, for the um, airport or from the airport excuse me and uh, showing some of the damage there at the airport i think that must have been a very exciting time there's a look at the track uh, missed the downtown area of st louis but of course got lambert field that's uh, kind of just to the left of uh, the upper center um, uh, just a little to the northeast of Maryland Heights there is where the airport was. Uh, the tornado's been rated in EF4, and uh, a lot of EF3 damage to go along with that. All right, let's look around central Alabama. Nothing like that going on around here. How about a beautiful shot as we look down from Mount Cheeha, highest point in the state of Alabama? And you can see some clouds uh, up against the mountains down there. We're seeing a few morning clouds again. And some morning clouds at Dauphin Island as we look out over... Uh, to the uh, east and Mobile Bay there, and uh, certainly a beautiful shot this morning. We're still dealing with this uh, uh, frontal system that is stalled across to our north, and it uh, looks like a little change in the forecast. It looks like maybe it's going to sink a little further south. Yesterday, the GFS was uh, suggesting that it would stay uh, to our north and northwest uh, through at least uh, Wednesday when it finally came through. Now it looks like it may sink close enough as the uh, upper trough is a little stronger off to our west and that could produce uh, some severe weather for us on Tuesday as well as it gets a little bit closer. There's a look at uh, the upper air pattern and of course we are in uh, a southwesterly flow pattern but there's not a lot of push for it to come further south but there's apparently going to be uh, the development of the trough out to the west is going to be a little bit stronger than what the GFS was suggesting yesterday, and the result is it's going to get into our area. Temperatures this morning are uh, fairly warm and uh, quite a range here this morning. Uh, almost the effects of the wedge still being seen. Uh, we're in the uh, mid-50s along the Georgia border, and we're about 70 at Tuscaloosa, so quite a range across the state of Alabama. Uh, many locations ranging mostly from about 58 to 70. Radar-wise, we can still see those showers off to our uh, north and northwest. And, uh, of course, along with those, just like we saw yesterday, there's a whole band of flash flood watches and warnings that are in effect for that area where they've been getting uh, training effects with uh, the, the front pretty much stalled, the boundary stalled, not moving much at all. And, of course, yesterday we were looking at nine inches of rain being uh, projected. Now the QPF... Folks are looking at uh, on the order of 10 inches. Now, across central Alabama, it looks like with the rain getting a little closer, it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday, we're probably going to see a little bit more like um, one to two inches across uh, our area. And uh, I don't know if you were watching a radar yesterday afternoon, but we actually had one little isolated storm on the Mississippi-Alabama line. And so I'm going to say dry today and tomorrow, but I guess an isolated shower is certainly not out of the question. Severe weather, definitely a possibility. Uh, you can see from the Storm Prediction Center's day one, that's today through 12Z tomorrow morning uh, or 7 a.m. Monday. Slight risk extending all the way from the mid-Atlantic states across Kentucky, uh, Arkansas, and um, uh, the eastern part of uh, Oklahoma into central Texas. Not much changes on day two, uh, except they up it to a moderate, and uh, it's more centered in the vicinity of uh, uh, the Mid-South area for the moderate risk, uh, focused on Arkansas primarily, uh, surrounded by slight risk extending from extreme southwestern Ohio all the way down into east uh, Texas. And then uh, on Day three, that's when it gets into our area, and this, this is a change from yesterday because, of course, it appears the trough is a little bit stronger, and the end result is that it uh, will come a little cl bit closer. And then the big day for us is likely to be on day four, uh, which is Wednesday into early Thursday morning. All right, the morning uh, 06Z GFS model run, and there's our front, uh, our boundary up there. Uh, we're getting... Um, 
Return flow pretty nice, uh, which is helping to feed that QPF forecast of uh, over 10 inches up there in the mid-Mississippi River Valley. In the upper atmosphere on Monday, we see uh, kind of a double barrel trough here. We've got the short wave that's coming out of the Rockies over Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle area. And then we've got a second stronger short wave coming in and a closed low coming in on the northwest coast. Now, that, what that means for us is that things, yes, do get a little bit closer. Uh, they get down uh, into Arkansas and West Tennessee, so definitely closer. And is, the, is there a possibility that we'll see some isolated showers? Oh, absolutely. Now, what happens is the first short wave moves on up into the Great Lakes. The second one dives in. And as the second one's diving in, it's going to be a little bit stronger, which means that it pushes things a little further to the south and east, or to the southeast. And the result is that we may see a threat of severe weather, especially across northwest quarter of the state of Alabama and into northern Mississippi on Tuesday. The, uh, the trough really digs in, and, and this was um, shown on the GFS, but it appears to be a little bit stronger, the stronger amplitude to the, the short wave as it comes across Arkansas. And of course, that's going to be our big day because there's the surface low, develops actually in West Texas, uh, moves uh, to the vicinity of Memphis on Wednesday at midday. So we're looking at the possibility of um, severe weather watches and probably the possibility of tornado watches on uh, thir uh, on Wednesday <clears throat> in the uh, afternoon and uh, evening hours. Now let's take an intermediate time and this is uh, this is 1 a.m. on Thursday and there you can see the weather coming through. The surface low has moved up into Ohio. Uh, the cold front trailing back through the state of Alabama looks like it's uh, positioned somewhere in the vicinity of Montgomery uh, by uh, Thursday, early Thursday morning. So we should be clearing out. So our main threat appears to be Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening into the uh, early morning hours of Thursday. Now, Here's uh, probably this sums it up the best. So I thought rather than showing a bunch of different charts that show the projected upper air chart for uh, Wednesday, this is for Wednesday morning. But uh, first of all, we have some pretty good wind shear, uh, 30 knots at the ground and 50 not too far up. Uh, and we have some turning to the wind. So that indicates the possibility that we may, uh, we're going to have some pretty good uh, helicity. And of course, the helicity value is around 700, which is substantial. And then uh, we've got low moisture. Uh, we've got moisture low on the sounding. And then we've got drier aloft. That always helps to uh, improve lift. And then in addition to that, CAPE values are uh, around uh, 700, uh, 600, pardon me, 600. And um, I think. By the afternoon, we're probably going to see values uh, between uh, 1,500 and 2,000 as a possibility. So what happens is that trough comes on by. Uh, the severe weather uh, moves on out uh, past us. The trough uh, moves on by Thursday at midday, and uh, we should be clearing out. Uh, we may see some wraparound moisture and some wraparound clouds, but it certainly looks like uh, we're going to be uh, drying out. We end up with uh, just a beautiful day, it looks like, on Friday with uh, surface high pressure uh, situated over the southeastern United States. Uh, another beautiful day as the high begins to move off to the east on Saturday, and we see return moisture, but it looks like we should stay dry on Saturday the 30th. And then by uh, Sunday, a week from today, uh, we're seeing the development of a larger, broader trough and what could be some even cooler air than what we're going to see uh, on Thursday and uh, Friday. So uh, with the, the broader trough there, we're going to get a much stronger uh, fetch from the northwest, and that will certainly help to cool things off. You notice the 540 line coming down well into uh, Missouri uh, on Sunday. So uh, possibility we'll see some much cooler air by the 1st of May and the 1st uh, of next week. Now, going out a little further to Monday, uh, the trough moves into the southeastern U.S. and the eastern half of the country, and you can see that northwesterly fetch, and of course, uh, the 540 line getting down to the Tennessee-Kentucky border. Going out into Voodoo even further, uh, pretty much uh, another change to the forecast is that uh, the, the ridge is now more developed uh, for the longer term. Uh, we see this on the 5th, and then once again we see uh, the ridge holding pretty tough, but certainly signs of some other changes. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video, and uh, hope that you have a wonderful Easter. 
hey, James Spann should be back in the saddle once again on Monday morning, and we'll be all watching the events for Tuesday and Wednesday. Godspeed. Have a great weekend. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see, all of the places close to me, they're all part of all the best things about home. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.